you would like to run the city like a business, when is it appropriate to do so, and when is it not? Well, it's definitely not a business. We're not trying to make a profit. Um, we're trying to help people serve them in a proper way. So this isn't a business, and I'm not under the illusion it's a business. And honestly, I don't run my business like a normal business, or the nonprofits I've run, I don't run quite like a business. But here are the things that are similar. I mean, you have a budget, you have financial constraints, you have employees and managers, you have labor contracts, and they're all very similar to all the things I've done. But the profit here is not money, it's uplifting people's lives, and that will be my focus and my goal. Okay, so here's another question. Uh, a mayor needs to work with leaders in Harrisburg and DC, and the state capital, and also the nation's capital. Talk about your skills and experience navigating those places and the people in them. So, in, in all of the things I've done, business, nonprofit, and my government appointments like the, the State Workforce Board, I've had to work with all the different levels of government, and I've had pretty good results. Um, I'm, I understand just because I can think of an idea doesn't mean I could get exactly that. And I have compromised, I've worked with people, I've horse traded in all the things I've done to get progress for people. And I don't believe, I believe that this will be something I will do quite well. Um, and honestly, we're never turning this city around on our own resources. We're gonna need help. And I realize that each person we need help from, like the state, like the federal government, has its own rules, its own systems. We will build the team to maximize that potential. Another question here is about, tell us about a time when you collaborated with another group, not necessarily a friendly one, to solve a particularly intractable problem. How did you work together to resolve your differences and what was the outcome? So if we go back to the work we've done in uh, criminal justice reform and especially reentry, um, one of the reasons people were failing is inflexibility of the system. And ultimately, we had no negotiated with almost every part of the system, including probation and parole, where we would call them up and, and we, we have a more of ability to do it than the people that are under their supervision. And we would say, this person can't succeed if you can't change their schedule. And we would go through every part of what affects a person's life, like housing, transportation, daycare, to advocate for the, the people we were training and trying to help, you know, to get progress. And as our results were good, we got more and more cooperation. Moving on to another question here about the uh, upcoming election this year. Uh, what are your plans to increase voter turnout for people under the age of 40? So I like social media to communicate. Um, most of my life I did it on my own and I have a little more help now. But one of the questions were, are we gonna use TikTok? Cause ah, are they really voters? But you know what, some of them are voters and that is how younger people communicate. And you will see I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I keep people informed. And you know the content's different because depending on the audience, they communicate differently. And you, you will see much different stuff on there. And I built a team to communicate with everybody, not just the younger people, but all the different age groups. And I believe that's one of the ingredients to our success is be able to communicate our plans and what we're trying to do and get buy-in. So just social media. Social media is one way. And of course, you, can re you do want to work with media in general. And we have tried to do that. I've done it in all the things I've done. But you know, you, you get what they decide. And so, you can't always get your message out. They're very constrained time-wise. So we will use social media, uh, I mean uh, regular media, but it's probably not going to get the whole message out. And so one of the things we've done is, I mean, we use text, text blasts. We use emails. We basically use everything there is. I mean, when I bought guns back over 15 plus years in gun buyback programs, um, we use radio. And we found partners to help get the message out and we felt that was effective. So depending on who you're trying to communicate, you're gonna use what works. There's a nonprofit in the city that has a credit card marketing firm that uses telemarketing to get people to sign up for their benefits. That's a way of communication. We will be innovative to figure out how to communicate, including door knocking if we have to. 
That's a lot of digital. Um, what are the top two outcomes city government should be managed to deliver? We have to be demonstrating progress with structural poverty. If we can't do that, nothing's going to work. We should be measuring that and communicating our success, highlighting the new programs we develop. That, that's got to be number one. Number two is violence. We have a tremendous violence problem, and I think we need a lot more information about what we're trying to do, who we're working with, and what our progress is. The citizens need that like almost on a daily basis. When people are, this is another question by the way, when people are miserable, they're mean, and all kinds of bad things happen. So what are your plans to improve the city's environment and climate, both physical and mental? Well, we have a leader now that is not very upbeat and not very present. And if you, you followed my work at all, I'm very optimistic and I'm very present. And, uh, and I hug everyone. And I will be in the neighborhoods hugging people and lifting them up. That's my style. Um, and I'll be doing it through social media and every other communication system. And I think visible signs of progress will lift people's spirits. And, uh, and you know, early successes will help people build confidence in the new administration, I'll be focused on that. You know, just a follow up here, how, how much would you use uh, proven evidence-based approaches to fixing Philly's violent crime problem versus strategies we keep using that we know don't work? You know, um, you have to go with evidence-based approaches and cities have been through this before um, and for example, Camden's gun violence is down. And I know they're a very small police force and they're different than us, but they did things that worked. And I think you have to look at what other cities uh, are doing and look at who's succeeding. So the things that we're currently doing that are not working, we know that's not going to work. And so, yes, you have to, be, you have to look at evidence-based approaches and adjust it for the culture in our city. Follow up to that, there's this growing movement of environmental groups and other organizations like uh, North Philly Peace Park, uh, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society that, that come to mind. They're pushing for a place-based strategy or an evidence-based environmental approach as a way to fix the city. Um, how much would you center the environment as a core part of your agenda? Well, we have a very uneven um, environmental circumstance in our city. Like Center City has beautiful tree cover. The neighborhoods, a lot of them have no tree cover. Tree cover is an important element to ad advancing um, our environmental situation. Um, you also will see um, that we have a nice carbon footprint reduction in, in more affluent sections of the city and almost none in less affluent. And so I think we have to make good environmental practices more broad in all the neighborhoods. And I do think that open space um, and tree cover and things of that nature will lift people's spirits up. It'll improve crime. And you know, we have a flooding problem. And you know, more, more open space, more tree cover can help us with that. So a lot of times, the place-based strategy really is what we need because neighborhoods need things that are, that are different. And we can solve several problems in each strategy if you do them right. Hey, has the violence problem in our city reached public health proportions, would you, would you call the violence crisis a public health emergency? Yes. This is, this is a tremendous crisis, um, but the only thing is, this has been going on and it's been deteriorating. And so, yes, this is a tremendous crisis. So what accomplishments of yours makes you qualified to be the next mayor? What are those big highlights that you think people should know that make you qualified to be the next mayor? So think about some things. One thing is I operate a business in the neighborhoods, often some of the most violent neighborhoods, but you don't see that violence in my place of business. You don't see graffiti, you don't see broken stuff. And so that should give you an indication that I think I see something different than other people. When the place is right and people are treated respectfully, you will see a different outcome, that's one thing. The second thing, I react to problems. 15 or more years ago, I started working with um, community-based groups, anti-violence groups, and we've consistently over that 15 years have done uh, goods for guns programs to try to get guns off the street. 
Now that's not a complete answer, but it's action, it's doing something. And all along I've been with the community trying to do things that would help.